All right. Uh, so this is the community preservation. Uh, Thursday, May 19th, uh, 2022 uh, meeting. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, an act relative to uh, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. Uh, this meeting will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted. So it is now 7.04, calling the meeting to order. And the first item is discussion of town treasurer on CPA accounts and investment strategy. So I know Brian was gonna be a little late, but I think Brian uh, Germo, Germoris, uh is yeah. the one who's gonna do the talking. Okay, I'll so bring him over. I'll bring him over. Mm -hmm. Brian? Hello guys, good, e good evening. Give me one minute, I gotta switch to video. Yeah, no problem. I don't know why that didn't pop up automatically. And then um, Kathleen Glowacki from our team is on as well. Uh, do you see her as a participant or? Yeah, I can move her over. Please, that'd be great. It's a little different experience being the um, being in the meeting and then being brought up. I wasn't yeah. sure. How that <laughs> it is. It's a little awkward. It is different. I just wasn't. You know, wasn't. I didn't know if you could hear me, see me, or not. So it was, <laughs> it was interesting. So, so anyways, well, thank you so much for having us. Uh, my name is Brian Jamros from Bartholomew. Uh, we've worked with the the town for uh, at, well, at least for the CPA, uh, CPC or the CPA funds since two thousand eight. I'm part of the uh, external investment management, uh, excuse me, in external uh, investment team. And then Kathleen Glowacki is part of the internal investment management team. She's the director of it. Uh, we're essentially located out of Worcester. We're an independent advisor for those that don't know. I don't think we've ever met with this group uh, since we've worked with you. Is that true or somebody correct me if not? No, I think that's true. Okay. So I'll just give you the quick rundown. Uh, we've worked with the town since 2008, like I've said, and uh, we're essentially located out of Worcester, Massachusetts. We work, we're about 3.7 billion assets under management. We are uh, about 2 billion assets under management for cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth, which represents about two, sorry about the dog in the background. Um, I'm working from home and I probably should have stayed at the office. Uh, two point, uh, two, mil two billion on mi uh, municipal uh, funds, which represents about uh, 260 municipal entities, which represent, let me just tell my wife, hold on, sorry about that. Can you guys hear me okay, or is that still annoying to you? Uh, it's, it's fine. It's, okay. it's background noise, it's fine. Yeah, it's not my dog, I don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, oh, it's funny, I heard, I heard a, uh, when we first started the Zoom, there was one company, I forgot who it was, they said, uh, just Keep in mind, we're working from home in the Zoom times, and we may have barking kids or screaming dogs. So uh, I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, they had it at the the prompt as soon as you, uh, I don't know if it was, I think it was a phone call. Uh, so that's what you would hear. So sorry about that. So that represents about 260 municipal entities, uh, which represents about 230 cities and towns. Uh, I'd love to say it's our personalities, uh, but it's not, uh, obviously. Uh, maybe Kathleen's, but not mine, no. Uh, it has to do with our municipal experience. We've had uh, Chuck Patterson, Sue Kelly, and Dora Hewitt on staff. Chuck's been with us the longest for 20 years. Uh, they All three of them have municipal background. Uh, so we've specialized in this business for the last 20 years. And every time we make a decision, we have to run it by the municipal employees that have a perspective of how does that impact the town funds. So there's our little uh, clip of that. Uh, we've partnered up with the largest uh, independent broker dealer called Commonwealth Financial Network. There are behind the scenes compliance, legal, uh, computer systems, uh, 
cybercrime security, all that good stuff. They're about eight, well, they're, they're 850 plus employees strong out of Waltham, Mass, with a satellite office out of uh, San Diego. And then your, the custodian of the funds are NFS, National Financial Services, which is a subsidiary of Fidelity. So that's the little rundown of it. Uh, so let's dig into this. I know you want to keep it, Brian, uh, keep it high level. Uh, we can dig into details as you want. How much time, um, Mr. or Mrs. Chairman, did you have for us tonight? Forgive me. Is it Andrew? Yeah, um, it was about 20 minutes. So that work? Work? Okay. Yep, works for us. I want to honor your time. You, I know you have other things to talk about. So, um, and I heard you're renovating the town, keeping things historic, which I love. So, okay. So a little background. First of all, um, Kathleen's going to go over the performance. I'm going to go over a couple of things uh, in terms of the CPA. Uh, the CPA is just, Brian thought this would be helpful for you just to remember. So you get the uh, quarterly, 1% uh, of the household values is paid for CPA. You all know that. That represents about 400,000 annually, uh, approximately. And um, what happens is that gets deposited into a local bank and then transferred over to us. Uh, and then depending on what you need, Brian squares up the books at least once a quarter. So you have liquidity right there within that 400,000. It's not necessarily that you um, always need liquidity within your own investments. Kathleen can show you what we do have for liquidity and talk about that. But right off the bat, every year you have $400,000 coming in from your tax base on a quarterly basis. I look back the last five years, just for some historic data. Uh, in 2021, there was a positive 190, I'm just gonna round 192,000. Uh, that was a net positive into this fund. Uh, calendar year, uh, this is, uh, I'm sorry, this is fiscal year, excuse me. Fiscal year 20, it was a withdrawn of 214,000. Uh, for calendar, uh, fiscal year 19 was uh, 97,500 positive added into the account. Fiscal year 18 was a positive 228,000. Calendar year, I'm sorry, I have calendar year in here. That's why I keep repeating that, forgive me. Fiscal year uh, 17, it was uh, negative 108. And the five-year average, uh, not necessarily average, but the five-year net positive proceeds was a positive 195,326. Just to give you a little background of how that all works, okay? So now were those, the, were those positive and negatives ju just from the flow from the funds going in and what we took out to pay for Correct. projects or, okay, that had nothing to do with what the funds were invested? Correct, that is just okay. funds coming in, coming out, totally. Good question, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the portfolio, I'm going to, can I share a screen, Andrew? Is that okay? Do I have that right? Yeah, yeah. you got permission. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Annie. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen in a minute. Um, and let me see. Do, 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 do. Somebody took care of the dog, so we're good. Okay. Uh, just if you could all just give me the thumbs up to make sure you see this. It says portfolio review. Okay, thank you. I learned that early on on Zoom. They couldn't read it halfway through. And then they said, could you please make that bigger? Can everybody see the size of that? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, the balance as of 4 30, 2022 is uh, 2,522,258.81. This is a, uh, this since inception under the direction of your treasurer, which has the custodian of your funds, uh, has been under prudent investor rule, chapter 203C, under a 60-40 portfolio. Um, so 60% equity, 40% bonds or fixed income. Uh, Kathleen will talk any about the details you want, uh, but I wanted to just give you a, kind of the target of that. Um, at first, and then you've probably seen some ebbs and flows, some high years, some low years, uh, probably specifically this year, you've seen a low years, the last three years, you've been at a high. I'm gonna go real quick here, and then I'm gonna turn over to Kathleen. Um, so this is a performance history by calendar year. 
um, 19, so a 60 40 portfolio in this in you know prior to this year we've been in a low interest rate environment um, and just to remind you covid 2020 uh, you know the interest rates are finally making headway and then they dropped to zero uh, prior to that the rates didn't start going up since 2008 uh, in February of 2018, they started going up and then they worked their way up to two, 3%. Uh, then COVID hit and then they dropped like a rock. But- hey, Brian, can, can I just ask a clarifying question first? Sure. Is, is our, so is, are these funds mixed with the towns too? Is the town, like, do they have other assets that are kind of in the same portfolio mix or is this completely on its side just CPC set up with that 60, 40 that you said. So the town of Southboro has a, this is a separate, completely separate account with just your funds. Okay. And they, does the they town- They do have other funds. Okay. So is, is that 60, 40 mix specific just for CPC or is that blanket across for the town, how it's done? Because to be honest, we, we've never had this much insight to how it got invested before. So, um, curious if the rest of the town money is um, allocated the same way or if it varies and who who decides that yeah so first of all so it's very unusual that the cpc gets involved with the investments i'm not knocking that i'm just saying we don't see that often uh so well, it was you... it was unusual to have a half million dollars in investment returns so that's why we're like how did that happen <laughs> yeah so it's primarily across the state and remember we deal with 230 cities and towns it's the treasurer's roles and responsibility uh, to make that decision based on cash flow, based on um, needs of your spending plans and all that good stuff. Um, but I think, I don't know who opened the door to uh, say, hey, let's, not that it's a bad thing, but transparency, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, this is a separate account. To answer your question uh, on the other town's accounts, uh, depending on the type of account. So stable is, uh, Kathleen, can you do me a favor? Uh, tell me about the, the the percentage of the trust fund. Um, yeah. Is that 60, 40 or is that? No. So it's uh, 70, 30. A little yeah, more so aggressive. The, yeah. The trust fund is a little bit more aggressive at 70, 30. And then there is a stabilization account. Uh, but the stabilization account is like your, your or my emergency fund. That's much more conservative uh, because when you have an emergency, unlike a planned CPC, uh, you know, your, your, your funds are pretty much planned year after year. Uh, if you have a project going on, the CPC monies can only be spent on, uh, it can't be spent on an emergency fund. Uh, the stabilization is slightly lower. Kathleen, what is that at 20? Forgive me. Um, yes, 20, yep. So, so the stabilization much more conservative at 20, uh, 80, which is much more, uh, you know, for a rainy day emergency fund. Remember, when you need an emergency fund is when the equity markets are way down, like COVID. Uh, and that would be more applicable to uh, an emergency fund strategy, uh, 2080. So your funds are more, you know, mapped out, planned out. An emergency is not. Okay. Does that answer your question on that? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. So what was the, Andrew, what was the, uh, what were you surprised about that you said about the uh, 500,000? What was that all about? I'm sorry. Uh, we just had, I think it was interest in return on investments of 500,000 that we were, uh, were surprised at when we went to town meeting to do our um, accounting. And, and the question came up, I'm glad Mark's here now. Um, it was like, how, we didn't know what it was invested in before. Mark, it's a, just to recap it for you, it's a 60-40 split between equities and more conservative um, investments. And it's our own account. Um, and it varies in that the town has multiple accounts with, um, with a firm to, to delegate you know, how they want to do investments depending on how aggressive they want to be. And it's decided by the treasurer. May, may I ask a few questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, Brian, the, uh, 
you know, we were obviously happy to see $500,000 dropped it in our account this year. Do, do you have any standing orders in terms of when to report uh, investment performance to committees like ours, like, like, like we heard this year? Do we have any standing orders? Very unusual, Mark, that we would meet with the CPC. We, we, our primary uh, customer is the treasurer. Uh, uh, treasurer. I'm not interested in, in no, no I, I'm not asking about a meeting. I'm just, you, you, we, you know, we try to plan out what we do and uh, it, it would be nice to know when we might hear about investment performance so we can plan accordingly. And oh, sure. I, I, I've been on this committee a long time and, and We've never had anything close to something like this reported to us. Uh, so we thought, thought it was a little unusual. Um, do you have any guidelines in terms of when that reporting takes place every year? Oh, so we meet with your treasurer twice a year at a minimum, uh, semi-annual and annual. And then uh, we, if, they, if, if your treasurer wants to meet us more, we're willing to meet more. Um, we report directly to them. Uh, and then they would share that information with you, if asked. So it, it's the treasurer that reports performance to us. Is that fair to say? Yes, that would be fair to say. And and that's been the case ever since you've been involved in this. Yes, we we have never met. I uh, we were talking earlier. I've never met with the CPC uh, since two thousand eight. These accounts have been open since two thousand eight. And and I think uh, somebody, uh, uh, I think all of them confirmed we've never met. Uh, Correct. So. Yep. And yep. you've uh, you've re you've met with the treasurer usually once or twice a year since two thousand and eight. Twice a year minimum, uh, and if there's a request for more, we'll meet more. Um, we do meet with the tr uh, the trust committee sometimes wants us to meet. Uh, the town has a trust committee uh, for other funds, and then their town uh, your town uh, Brian the town treasurer also has other stabilization funds, which is like an emergency fund, and we report. Uh, that to him. So yes, yep. Minimum twice a year. Uh, usually we like to meet after the fiscal year ends. However, with summer vacations, audits, year end, beginning year ends, it usually happens in October, uh, September, October, excuse me, time frame. And then we usually like to meet sometime in uh, March, April, although with COVID craze, it's gone into probably April, May. So which is fine. And, and whenever those meetings take place, that's when you report performance to the treasurer. Is that correct? Okay? Yep, correct, Mark. And otherwise, we're sending monthly accounting reports on a monthly, uh, either a quarterly or monthly basis, depending on how the treasurer requests for that. Um, but the re uh, performance report is at least semi annual twice a year. Hey, can I jump in here? Um, hi, everyone. This is Freddie Gillespie. I do consulting for the CPC. Hi, Brian and Kathleen. Nice to meet you. We've been emailing. Mark, one, of the, one of the answers to your question could be that annually we have to file reports to the Department of Revenue. And for this committee, it's the CP3 and I believe accounting files the CP1. And then we get all of our numbers from um, Brian and accounting. And that's when it's reported to the committee. And that's when we found out about the $500,000 that I reported to you because it was such a jump. Um, this last year, I started talking with uh, Carla and Brian Valentine about reviewing the CP1 that they report with um, all of the revenue from the surcharge as well as the return on the investments. So that's how it sort of came about this year because we thought we had a certain amount in our account based on last year's budgeting and it was significantly higher. So I had the conversation with them and then reported to you. So, Freddie, would you agree that over the years, this is far and away the largest number we've ever been told about? It's the largest I've ever been aware of. You know, back in the early days, I was um, tracking all the accounting on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and then we, we didn't, as the accounting got better and there's more processes, we sort of left it in the hand of the um, accounting department. And every year 
what we were told was left in the account in the fall when we started doing our budgeting sort of lined up with what we thought would be there. You know, there's always a little bit, the surcharges, you know, it's an estimate, right? And then, you know, how we look at the um, state match and that comes in higher or lower and we do our adjustments. But a few years ago, we stopped every year, we used to um, make adjustments to actual income. And then we were told that we didn't need to do that. So I can't say for sure in the last few years, but no, in the past, we never had any jump like $500,000. And, and Brian, and I'm aware. Was, I, know, I appreciate that. And, and Brian, w w was this past year that extraordinary in terms of investment and performance? Yeah. So, Mark, good question. I have to ask a question. What number? What number date point of reference you're looking at for that five hundred thousand? First off, before I is that a fiscal year, calendar year end? What's the date that you're seeing that five hundred thousand? I believe it was the fiscal year. I think so you're looking fiscal. at fiscal year 21? I believe so. Correct, because that would have been the CP, what they report to Department of um, Revenue annually is in September after we close out the books. Okay, and then you're also looking at current market, uh, you're looking at the market value, not necessarily the uh, book value, correct? We weren't looking at either value, we were looking at the balance in our account. That we could use. We were, we were told that the investment performance yielded five hundred thousand dollars in a okay. year. Let me give me one moment. I want to take a look at something. I just want to make sure I'm answering your question in appropriate context. So just give me a minute if you don't mind. I'm going to look at. I'm going to pull up. We do pull up together at a counter report. It's GASB forty five approved. It has. Uh, enough detail for uh, the treasurer, the accountant, the auditors. Um, let me just give me one moment if I could. And Kathleen, if you want to talk a little bit about the markets in the last couple of years while I'm looking for that, if that's okay, how we've had such strong markets, or would you like me to pull that up first, Kathleen, before I put you in? Um, I mean, I can pull it up too if you're, are you on? Oh, yeah, I was sorry. just looking for the account report through yeah. 630. Yep, that's where I'm yeah. going. Okay. So yeah, let's stick with that for now. Okay, give me a minute. Let me just pull that up. Let's all get on the same page and let's go through. CPC, CP, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, yep, I see what you're saying. Okay, let's see, do, 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 do. Share screen, forgive me, I have to look beyond, here we go, let's share screen. Okay, hey, Freddie, so, those CP1 the filings with the, the state treasurer, those are public record, aren't they? Those are terms that uh, uh, we don't get involved with that reporting. That's your accountant to your um, to the state. I don't know those uh, numbers. So it, what, did, um, uh, what was her name? I forgive me. Was it Freddie? Freddie. Freddie, can you confirm that, Freddie, that those numbers are correct? So we don't get involved with that reporting. We get involved with the reporting to the treasurer. Sure. Uh, for the account report, can you guys see this account report here? I can. Yes. Okay, so this is a, an account report that we provide to the town. The town then gleans information from this and puts on their uh, their reports uh, for the state. Uh, the numbers that you're referring to, uh, you know, I'm not familiar with the particular numbers per se um, because you're getting into the into the very specific. So I just, I can't confirm that, but these are the numbers we produce for uh, the town treasurer's office and, and then turn in turn, make sure that they jive with the uh, accounts office. Can so, I so, say for, for your question, this is Freddie again, sorry, I don't have the video. Um, I would now not look at something like this. We get reports from Brian and it's a little um, unfortunate he couldn't be here yet because he's running late. Um, because what we get for the committee, we have to report to the Department of Revenue all the projects that were funded for the year and what, you know, which uh, buckets they came out of, what, you know, what, what accounts of ours they came out of. But the accounting office obviously prepares 
their own documents. And I'm sure this is what feeds them, but we, we had never looked at that before. And it doesn't, you know, so I don't, I'm not familiar with what this form is. But so Brian, look, looking at this, the, it, this suggests to me that the, what it earned in a year was either the $570,000 number or the $417,000 number. Is that correct? Uh, no, well, not necessarily. No, it's a change in unrealized uh, gains. Uh, you know, it's, this is, remember, this is not a performance report. I just want to make sure you're clear on that. This is a pure accounting report. Uh, this is going to give you market value and book value. Your actual earnings would be more so on, um, let's see, net earnings for the year is more 149, uh, whoops, uh, 149,606,26. Now your unrealized gain for the portfolio is 573,8010, but that's not, that's not necessarily, this is a unrealized gain or loss for the portfolio uh, for the year. And this is a, a change in unrealized gain or loss from previous fiscal year. So, so uh, forgive me for being uh, uninformed, but what does that number represent? Okay, so that, so uh, are you familiar with the terminology unrealized gains and losses by chance? Uh, somewhat, but assume that I'm not. Well, listen, before I was in this world seven years ago, I had no clue what unrealized or realized gains or losses were because I'm not an accountant. <laughs> uh, but now that I do municipal accounts in seven years, I, I thankfully I married a CPA and I said, honey, what is unrealized gain or loss? And uh, anyways, how it works is this, you buy a house for a, I know you can't buy a house in Southborough for a hundred, but it's late and I'm up early. So let's just say uh, you bought a house for a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, let's say that house went up in value to two. Uh, you don't sell it. You live in it. You have a hundred thousand dollar unrealized gain. You buy that same house for a hundred. It goes down in value to ninety thousand. You have a ten thousand dollar unrealized loss. It's not until you sell that house that you realize a gain or a loss at the time. So that would be the pure accounting of it. Um, so this is giving you a market value. We buy securities within the fund at that 60-40 portfolio. Um, and that point in time, you had an unrealized gain of 570,000, 380.10. Uh, however, you, uh, yep, you mark to market on a, a, a quarterly basis, which means that's the number you're using. But if you're looking at spending money, how much you can spend, you wanna really be looking at the net earnings. Uh, net earnings is, um, the principal plus uh, net income plus realized gains or losses. So, okay, so, we, so let, let me stop you there. Yeah, sure. When we're told that we have $500,000 to spend, that sounds to me like something was sold and a gain was realized and we have that realized gain to use. Am I mistaken in that regard? Uh, well, what, what I think has happened is it sounds like your, your auditors have told the town to switch over and maybe Freddie could uh, shed light on this because I think she has a little bit more inform. So uh, this is another gap. Uh, it sounds like your town has switched and I'd have to confirm with Brian. When did they switch from going to cash value to market value in their accounting uh, standard? Uh, it sounds like that is what's happened. And that's why you're seeing such a large, you saw such a large number for the first time. That would oh. be a guess of mine. Is that so, accurate, Freddie? I would have no idea. That's why we invited Brian to come here and explain it to us. I asked what happened when we gotcha. I just got, I just got we, uh, every year when we do our budgeting for the future year and looking at projects, we need to know the balance in the accounts after you, tying out from the prior fiscal year. We go to town meeting, money comes in, money goes out. They tie it out, they have to report to the Department of Revenue. And we were given the balance that included a $500,000 return on investments. That, that's what I know. All right, I just brought over Brian. Okay, great. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah, great, great timing, time. thank you. 
Oh my god, Brian, it looks like your account's overdue. I can go oh. build up and fill your All day. Right. Sorry about that. <laughs> they messaged and said they were Brian. I assumed he's had the wrong name up. So I guess it was somebody just trolling us. Oh, that's interesting. Sorry about that. <laughs> I've never had that before. No, I've never had that before either. Okay, so, um, is, so Mark. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. This isn't. No, I didn't know if Sam was. Uh, Sam, do you know when they switched that accounting? If you do, just raise your hand. Sam Stivers. I guess you don't. Okay. Sam's one of the selectmen. I didn't know if he'd know. That's more of an accounting slash treasurer kind of thing when they deal with the auditors a lot. Uh, so Gasby, one of the Gasby, forgive me, I don't remember which one it was, but one of the Gasby's read the fact that you have to mark to mark to market once a year. Uh, some auditors want you to start doing that on a quarterly or monthly basis. Uh, Fifty percent of the cities and towns are marking to market on a, a, a on a regular basis, and then the other ones are using um, book value or market value. When you're looking at the, so think about that analogy I gave you. Buy that house for a hundred. Let's say you rent that house out for a thousand dollars a month. Uh, the value of the house goes up to two hundred thousand you can only spend the income on that house for the rental property that you have available until you sell that house. Um, so you would want to look here in the net in your net income would be for the rental property. And then, you know, we're not, we're able to sell rooms of the house if we will, if we're referring that to securities, uh, we were able to rebalance the portfolio. And uh, uh, Kathleen, you want to talk about how you rebalance the portfolio minimum once a year? and how we had two strong years and how we've done that. And that's why this, this number is up right here. Yeah, so um, during the year, so the, I just looked in the fiscal year for this portfolio, it was up about 25%, which is a huge, that is you know just to justify what you've seen as well. That's a huge increase in the value of the portfolio, well beyond what we normally expect. So, um, so some of the realized gains was just us going in there and seeing things appreciate and selling them down um, so that we could kind of capture some of the gains. But a lot of like that 500,000 that you're seeing is, is a huge um, jump just in general. I don't know if, like Brian said, if it's a switch to market value or not, but um, there was a huge realize, um, unrealized gain just in over the fiscal year since COVID really, really strong market. So some of that was realized, um, some of what we did was realize some gains, but we also had this large chunk um, of money that just appreciated so much. So Kathleen, can you tell us what the unrealized gain loss is today? Um, I can. Just give me a second here. So she's pulling that up. The what even though they're on market value, the part you should be looking at for being able to spend is the net earnings, which is the net income plus or minus the realized gain or loss equals the net earnings. So really the 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 value should be looking at adding 149.606.26. Um, even though you had an unrealized gain of 573.80, that fluctuates depending that, that would only be a gain from an unrealized if you liquidated on 630. Um, so the unrealized gain at this point is um, 397,000. Okay. <clears throat> For what period of time? Um, so that, what I just looked at would be since inception. So this is just looking at the fiscal year, um, what you see in front of you, and that would have been since inception. Yeah, uh, uh, my, I, my intention really is not to get too much into the weeds and all of this. Uh, we're not, I, I'm not interested in who makes the investment decisions. I, I, I just want to know when, we can expect for these to be reported uh, and 
uh, why we got this extraordinary number this year. And it, it, honestly, it sounds like uh, Brian Ballantyne is probably in the best position to answer that. Uh, and I, I, I truly appreciate the, the information you've provided. You've helped um, um, me immensely understand it, but I still think, I think we're gonna just ask him a few questions. Yeah. I yeah. think our follow-up question is like, because it sounds like that 500,000 or so isn't actually realized. So so we were excited that we could spend more, but I don't think we can actually spend more. So we probably will have to follow back up with Brian on that. Well, it was given to me as the balance in our account. Respectfully, I think we can spend it. So somebody made a decision to realize it for some oh, reason, mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. I, I just... And I was very clear when I asked about it and also that I asked, are we then at risk of losing principal? And that was when this conversation was recommended to have with the committee. So if like, I may, yeah, uh, Freddie, um, I think we need Brian because and I, it's not just Brian, I think we can help add value too because you're ending earning balance which is your, which is your accumulated earnings over the years is close to six hundred forty-seven thousand thirty-six dollars and one cent through that same time frame of fiscal year ending June 30, twenty twenty-one. I think if we had Brian in here, we could have a good conversation. Unfortunately, it sounded like he had something that he had to attend to uh, last minute that was on. That he had to go to, so uh, I think we could help out. But there's there's some connect the dots, if you will, that we could help out with. But I think we need Brian. I think Mark is 100 percent correct because okay. we can ask those questions. So yeah, I think another question for Brian is uh, depending on our needs and the applications that come to us. Uh, you know, if if we're a little short on funds, can we can we realize some of these gains? Can we can can the securities be sold uh, so that we can it, fund some some project that has become a priority and, and what would the process be for that i think in years past we get reported the uh, uh to us the the surcharge amount and this is this is in previous years all sort of been baked in and we never saw the gory details of what's going on and it it was really surprising to see it, it and wonderful to see it split out like this so we can we can see these details but it's sort of a, a lot to get our minds around yeah, definitely. Is that a, a ben, uh, is it Ben or Benjamin? What's your brand? Ben, please, yes. Okay. Uh, so Ben, um, do you mean Brian me, Brian J? So I'm sorry, oh, Ballantyne, excuse me. Sorry, Brian. Um, yeah, Brian Ballantyne, I think would, would probably uh, uh, be able to tell us, you know, first, is that possible? And if it is, what's the what's the procedure? What's the time frame? Uh, uh, that kind of thing. So he can tell you from a treasurer's perspective, I can tell you from the securities perspective, we buy daily liquid securities. Yes, um, we can sell any of this uh, in a, 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 within notice, obviously, and then it's a, a, a settlement. Uh, excuse me, sell plus two day settlement, so we could have it back into your account in three days. Um, as far as um, doing that, uh, you just want to be mindful of the. You know, I don't know if Brian has or I don't believe he has any other accounts. I know he has that the uh, credit of. Uh, annual 400,000. So he's balancing up his cash flows and whatnot, but, but you're right. There's a, there's a lot of questions. You guys, this is the first time seeing this. So, and I think something's changed in the background with that reporting. So that's probably the answer. Yeah. So, so thank Brian, you. yeah. Thank you, Brian and Kathleen for coming. This is a uh, definitely eye opening for us and uh, we'll definitely try to get uh, another time on the on the agenda so we can go through this with Brian Valentine as well, uh, to make sure we're all on the same page. So, Sounds yeah, good. if uh, you need, uh, I would, you know, we, we can certainly uh, keep in mind, we do have three treasurer collectors, former treasurer collectors on staff. Um, we see best practices across the Commonwealth. So if you need anything, you know, help, please use this as a resource, not only as your investment advisors, but uh, if you want to know what some other CPCs are doing, not that you have to do what they do, but we have some ideas. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry I couldn't help further, but we'll get to no the bottom problem. of it. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Have a good day. Have a good you day. Too. All right.
Um, so next on the agenda, we have a, an update on the project for the St. Mark's clock tower. All right. So Matt, Lynn, um, I think and then sorry, was it Robert? Joyner. Robert, yeah. We know a Steve Nelson or Robert Force Foster. Uh, Robert Foster and okay. Steve Nelson are both uh, part of the project. Okay, all right. I like I've seen lots of people jumping I, in and out, and raising their hand, and I'm like, what's after, going on tonight? Uh, <laughs> after the earlier one, I can appreciate the. Um, <laughs> Thanks. All right, they're coming over. Oh, I don't think Robert accepted. We'll try again. I think he was trying to get in. There you go. All set. All right. Um, since I'm, I guess I'm on. Um, Mr. Chairman, would you like to have us give a brief, brief presentation, or do you have, do you want to handle this with a series of questions? Oh, no, I think um, a brief presentation is fine. I mean, we're just looking for an update of, you know, I, I know that through some of the emails and everything, you guys are getting ready to um, start the work. So um, just, it's good to be proactive, get the whole board up to speed or the committee up to speed on um, what's happening uh, so that when bills do start coming in and we see work happening, um, we're up to date on it, so. Okay. Well, since I was in Southboro yesterday, and I'll be there again tomorrow, yeah, Southboro is the beat right now. Um, so, um, Steve and Bob and Matt, do you mind if I just get started on this and you join in? Yeah, yes, please do. Yep, that's okay. fine. Great. Okay, fine. Well, I have the privilege of, of having served as the preservation architects for St. Mark's Tower for the last five years, starting first with an assessment study, then a first phase of preservation work that put a new roof on the tower and did some initial masonry restoration. But this time around, we are doing the comprehensive, you know, all four sides of the building um, for, of, of the tower, starting next week with erecting staging. Um, I know that the, I saw Bob and Steve that the, and my, Matt, that the U's had been removed at the base of the tower. So that's ready to go. Uh, the contractor for this project is a firm known as Sinoxo. They happen to be the low bidder on this project. They were the low bidder on the first phase as well. And we're pleased that they're continuing. Um, this is a project that will start in next week in May and run through October. Um, it's a sensitive project involving a considerable amount of resetting and rebuilding of masonry, grouting of the walls. Um, it, it's a slow process um, and it will be done in, uh, I think, a, a, a very sensible and practical fashion, but one that is, is observant of good preservation practices. I do have a cash flow projection that I received today. The rest of the committee has not seen it as yet as well as yet, but that is actually projecting um, the approximate expenditures over the period of this project. So um, that starts out in May with a projected expenditure, or excuse me, a projected expenditure by the end of June of $116,000. This is significant in part because there's additional funding from the Mass Historical Commission and that has a deadline of expending at least $100,000 by the end of June. Um, and that's a $50,000 matching grant. Of course, the community preservation grant is a significant source of funding here, along with funds that have been raised by the St. Mark's congregation. So for the next uh, four months, there'll be expenditures of estimated at $145,000 a month. So that runs July, um, August, September, and October. 
And then for closeout and final, you know, retainage and so on, the in November they're projecting fifty-five thousand dollars, and that sort of makes the expenditure of approximately seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on this project. So, uh, Steve and Bob and Matt, you might remember that Jim um, Perry was the foreman on this project for the first phase and he will be the foreman on this project as well. So we again have continuity and skill um, on the scene here. So um, love to hear any questions from the committee or concerns. Yeah, I'll open up to the committee. Jen, any questions? David? Are, are you seeing any challenges in terms of getting materials, um, sort of supply chain issues, or has that been not been sort of vetted yet? Well, David, that's a very legitimate question. Everyone is very aware of that. Um, with mortar and sand, it's not so much of an issue. Um, so those are the basic, we have we, you know, traditional materials here. Natural cement is one of them. Um, but this firm has got a good stock of that material. They have the red sand that was already approved in the previous um, um, process. And the grouting, um, which is a special order material, has also been ordered um, in, a, in stock. So this is, is really a labor project <laughs> um, and, and a skilled labor project. But that's a I'll also point. I'll also add that the uh, there is steel involved yeah. for the reinforcing inside, and Synaxo, our our vendor, already has that in stock. Yeah, so those are steel ties. They're they're Nextel ties um, that they, Steve is referring to. So, but it, it it's a small amount of steel. It's not like some of this big steel that has been a problem. Thank you. Um, there is some, there is some, some timber work on the inside as well. Again, you know, that's not a huge amount of material, but some material to be sort of um, ordered and set aside. We go through a, a, a submittal and review process so that we are seeing the materials and approving them in advance. Um, and those records are kept with the church as well. Great. David, any other questions? Uh, have there been any unforeseen problems or uh, surprises? Not yet, but you know, M Mark, any project like this is subject to them. There's no question about it. You know, this building was sounded, I mean, now again, it was five years ago when we did the initial assessment. And that was myself with John Watney, our structural engineer, and we sounded that entire building. Um, do all, all four sides of the tower and identified and mapped the areas to be rebuilt versus deep repointing um, and areas to be grouted. But I won't say that there's not an opportunity to find that there's more deterioration. Sure. Um, and that's why having skilled hands on this building makes a lot of sense. It will, is, is actually critical. So we visit the job at least once a week. If there's something that sort of comes up that is uh, you know, a surprise, we're out there as needed. Um, and our structural engineer, John Watney, is on the job as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ann, any questions? Uh, no questions, but I just wanted to say, Lynn, thanks so much for the update. Um, and it's ex exciting to, to hear the progress so far. Okay, thanks. Ben? Yeah, uh, um, first, as Andy said, thank you so much for, uh, for coming in this evening. It, it, it's not that other projects don't come in, it, but it usually requires an awful lot of asking on our part. So we, we really appreciate uh, uh, getting an update this early in the process. Um, so presumably you'll be getting uh, pay requisitions uh, monthly from your general contractor on this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our turnaround, and Freddie, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to be running about three weeks from, from the receipt of an invoice to get it through all the town's systems and so forth. And I know you 
uh, um, you know, with the contractor, I'm sure you're hoping to turn the, the pay rack around in, in 30 days for payment. Um, so I just, I know you've worked municipalities in the past, but just to sort of emphasize it, the quicker it gets to us, the quicker it can, it can slowly percolate through our system. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you know, you mentioned in any project, things, things can come up. Um, obviously there are uh, uh, some contingencies built in to some degree. Um, uh, the earlier that we can be involved in that, the better, so that we don't we don't develop hiccups there. Uh, our, our policy is always with the, the contingencies. Uh, uh, um, you know, we need to meet to discuss that to approve it as a, as a committee um, before a payment is made on, for instance, a change order or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure nothing that you haven't seen before. I just wanted to just wanted to get it all set up. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Could I ask a question? So, um, yeah, go ahead. All right. So my question, and I'm just wondering along the lines of change order, and uh, we had an email exchange with Freddie that outlined um, how the how the payments would work, and the fact that um, uh, the CPC or the town of Southboro would pay the vendor directly. The the total project is. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. So, with and with the funds from Southboro being three hundred thousand, what I had proposed, if it was agreeable to the committee, was that St. Mark's and, and just for background, I'm the treasurer of St. Mark's, so I'm I'm just keenly interested in just the the funds flow of how this will uh, will work. What I had proposed was St. Mark's would own the, this first phase that Lynn had uh, mentioned, the hundred and you know, so on thousand, I forget the exact dollar that she mentioned, would pay that amount directly from the funds that were made available through the capital campaign in order to secure the matching grant from uh, the Mass Historical um, Commission. And then thereafter, my hope was that uh, the town of Southboro would pay the next 300,000 that gets you essentially to 400 and Ten to fifty thousand dollars of the project, and the total project commitment is seven fifty. To the point that you asked about the contingency, I mean, Saint Mark. I had viewed it as, and I think we had all viewed it as, Saint Mark's is on the hook for the contingency, and we are committed to the completion of the project. So, I don't see it as being something that you. I mean, we will update you as we as we go and and making decisions, but we're we're committed to the full preservation of the tower. Um, you know, short of a catastrophe, which I suppose is never um, out of the, the realm, but I mean, we, we're gonna restore this thing. So is that is that a fair way of thinking about it or like just help me understand? Well, Can I, I jump in it, Ben? I don't believe there's any contingency funding for this project. Okay, um, we have with all of our other projects, but thinking back on this, we don't have specific contingency funds here. So, so there is no additional I, from the 300,000 once that's used. I see, okay. That's okay. Right. Yeah. So, and, and Matt, the way I mean, I kind of think of it like it got pitched to the town as this was a portion of the overall project, right? Um, and maybe this is just me, but um, I was thinking that, you know, we'd pay a portion as we go through the whole cycle if it came in under, if they wrapped up early and it was under budget or something um, that we would not, everyone would realize a savings, not just, you know, the church. Um, but that's just me thinking, but I don't know. I haven't done this in the past where it's been combined like this. Um, but, you know, Freddie, I don't know if you've gone through a, uh, a project similar to this where it's co-funded. Not, not that I'm a, not a big construction project like this, no. I don't know, the uh, public safety building might've had some, but we just got our, you know, the contract was written really clearly what we paid for. So is it, where are the rest of the funds coming from after the 450? It's from our capital campaign and the, the resources from St. Mark's. Okay. So, so that, that, I, I, that's proposed, I proposed it, the, 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 pay, the payment cycle that I proposed was 
you know, purely, I understand, I appreciate, Andrew, your point, because I think it's a valid one. Um, I, I, I think the likelihood, unfortunately, in this project, from everything that we've heard from Synexo and the, and the pressure that we applied to Lynn and understanding the totality of the, the project cost, I think, unfortunately, the, the, the higher likelihood of this project is that it is going to be north of 750. And, and, uh, and even if it's not, it's going to be you know, well in excess of 600,000 uh, or more. And um, so, and which is everything that we had described when we came to the town of Southboro in requesting the, the funds in support of the project. Um, my, my view on handling it in this manner is just for ease of administration of rather than uh, trying to split bills 50-50, let's just from a, just to, to finish saying, well, to finish the town of Southboro's obligation, pay you know, secure the mass historical grant, get those funds do the South, town of Southboro, and then St. Mark's will complete the project. And you know, as and we'll come back to the committee and keep you updated on the progress, and 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 surely uh, give you the documentation you need to know that the project was done and complete and fully paid, which I think is probably important to you as well. I'd like to reinforce Matt's comment about the it's it's very unlikely that this will be below the budget it would be below the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar contract with Sinoxo. I mean, as it is, I just want to give the committee that the, the sense of the range of bids on this, but they were well north of the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Sinoxo came in at that price because I think in part because they had worked on the building and they understood it. So yeah, I don't I, think this I, is a place for savings, unfortunately. I, yeah, I, I totally get that. Uh, I just, I wouldn't be doing my role as the chairman without thinking about that as a possibility and planning for it, that's all. So okay. if, if there's maybe an agreement at the end that if it does come in under, then a portion gets paid back to the town or something, you know, uh, you know, you see what I'm saying? It's just if, if I was a town, just a townsperson looking at this and saying, okay, hey, you know, it was a close vote too, right? Yeah. Um, so I want to be able to make sure that we're uh, looking out for the interests of the town at the same time to say, okay, if, if something were to happen, and it, I, I agree with you, it probably isn't going to happen, but we're being thorough and thoughtful of, how the CPC funds are getting spent. Um, and if that were to happen, that, you know, it's not just, hey, we paid up everything up front and then it came in much lower and we ended up paying the whole thing, which I know that's not gonna happen, but, you know, so there's there's that aspect that I, I'm, I'm looking out for. Maybe, maybe I might suggest this, there will be weekly meetings and if the church is agreeable, we can let the, members or if there's a representative of the community preservation committee that would like to attend the meetings that's a possibility otherwise we could also copy you on our job minutes and that's another good way of keeping track of things but i appreciate the point i i just want to say i chair community preservation in my town i just left my town meeting review committee because they're reviewing the articles for our town meeting on Saturday. And I appreciate the, the, the chair that you're sitting in, Andrew, and your, <laughs> and your responsibility. Yeah. Andrew, Sorry, I, yeah. yeah uh, it sounds like this might be something we would want to talk to the Community Preservation Coalition about. Just that uh, I understand Matt's uh, proposal for payment. Uh, I, I, I uh, um, but your point uh, uh, makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I want to make sure that we're not required in some fashion to uh, keep pace with the, the, you know, the percentage completion of the project with the percentage disbursement of town funds, if that makes, if that makes sense. And I, I have a feeling that this is something that uh, Stuart Sagnor would probably have had some amount of experience with and could offer us some guidance. Yeah, that'd be uh, fun. Freddie, is that something you could follow up with, uh, Stuart? I will follow okay. up with Stuart. Um, 
they don't usually answer on Friday, so it will be sometime next week. That's a day off of doing, uh, helping out. Uh, and then just the, one, the, 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 um, the discussion of the, uh, the mass historical $50,000 grant, uh, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. It's a sort of a matching grant. You have to expend some, some church funds in order to receive that, that grant, as I understand it. And, and that was explained also at town meeting. So it, uh, uh, it strikes me as something that that would be easy to accommodate. It's something that was presented to town meeting and town meeting did, did approve just the, the, the rest of it. It feels like uh, we should just get a little guidance from, from folks. Who yeah, are and, and maybe I might add, and Lynn, you can confirm, I believe specifically for that purpose, it was scoped as a phase and they're gonna do that first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And my understanding, um, Matt and Ben, is yes. that the church is paying for the matching for this, the historic, not, this, not the town of South Grove. Yes. Yes. So yes. that will be done first. And then yeah, that's, yeah. I will ask Stuart about the future payments for the project, if it should be phased in some percentage or if we should just pay bills the first 300, which is what mm -hmm. you proposed, Matt. Right. Yeah, and, and and as I'm thinking about it, and, and probably with a little bit of help, Lynn, depending on what you can do, I'm sure Synexo, if if that's a practice, and let's say that is the kind of the standard, then maybe they're familiar with it, and they would they would bill, say, St. Mark's at a, an amount and the town of Southboro amount up until you know the, the project is completed. So the follow up would be helpful, and we'd understand how how we're going to fund it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm searching in my past memory and experience because I've worked on a lot of community preservation funded projects with private money as match. I, I've never seen bill split, but it's possible. Oh, yeah. And, you know, if if that's the guidance that comes from the town, then we'll work accordingly with Sinoxo. Um, it's very important, you know, we, we go through a requisition process with a schedule of values and we really track their, you know, to make sure that the, the monies have been spent and before we actually approve a requisition, we go through a pencil draft the week before and then a final, um, with a re review of actual work accomplished. You know, sometimes we have requests for mat stored materials, but I do not see that as being an issue here. Um, I see this as being work on the site that you can see. So. Right. No, I, and again, this is great why you came in early so we can hammer this stuff all out sure. ahead of time before a bill comes and people will start getting stressed like, hey, we, you know, we have overdue bills. So right. um, um, again, much appreciated that we have this time to talk up front and we can uh, work out so that everyone's comfortable with how it flows through um, when the time comes. So Freddie, thanks for reaching out on that aspect. Um, and again, I, you know, I'm, um, Mark, Matt, I'm not trying to make okay. it more complicated to pay bills either because I was thinking of that even when I was- Yeah, no, I guess yeah, um, you, you, nothing, I understand yeah. what position so, makes sense. So if uh, hopefully Stuart's going to come back with something that maybe we just have a you know written agreement that hey if we come under budget we pay back X percent or whatever the percent under budget because Len you did such an amazing job with the library and saved so much money you know that's right I know but Andrew don't count on that, that I'm not amazing. I'm not but I, I you know <laughs> Sam Stivers is on this call and he's on the select board and he'll hold me to the fire on this if. Well, gosh, I was out yesterday with the lift survey at the townhouse and, you know, that's the next project. So, you know, I've got to yep. be careful. Got to be careful. <laughs> so, okay. Any other questions from the committee? I have one from not the committee before you end yep. the topic. But is there any other questions from the committee? I didn't want to cut them off. Didn't look like it. Okay. Um, we also were going to talk about the signage and... Um, St. Mark's had sent me some good information that sign, I guess you've been watching our meeting and saw the sign we, or Lynn, you were at the meeting maybe where we proposed a sign of a picture I took of in Concord and they gave me the contact info of how to do that.
but I believe for the church, we weren't necessarily talking about that big sign. So is this something maybe we should have a few members of the committee walk over to St. Mark's with some people and talk about what, what we all think would be appropriate? Well, probably. I mean, MHC has its own sign requirement. I, I think Bob and Steve and Matt were recycling the prior sign, right? Uh, no, we, we, can, we cannot recycle the, the prior sign because it was, it was an emergency grant that was provided. So that's a temporary right? sign. So. Yeah, that's, it, that is, that's right, Freddie. That's a temporary sign. So it's a big four by four piece of plywood that you know gets a lot of language on it that stays up for just the duration of the project. But if community preservation is looking for a permanent sign, that's a different issue. And I think that would be a conversation to have with the church. Yeah, absolutely. So okay. it's a requirement for the funding, but the size and the placement is up for discussion. And maybe we can set up an email visit. Who would wanna be part of that from the CPC that I could include, I can send it out to all the members, but it would be nice to have a point person. And Ben, are you kind of taking the lead on this? I would be happy to, I'd be happy to. So I'll set it up with a time with Ben and who the representative from the church would be. I'll just email the email I have with everyone's name on it. And then okay. once we find a date, we can invite anyone else from the CPC as well, but we just want to make sure that we can find a date that works for and did anyone else want to be part of that definite has to go and view it? Does, does that work for everyone on the committee? No, yeah, that works. Good. Okay, thank you. Great. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming in and for the update. And then um, once Freddie gets an answer back from the uh, coalition, uh, we'll email you guys what they came back with and then uh, hopefully we can just work it out through email. If not, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put you on the next meeting agenda. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you all very much. Have a good Thank evening. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. So next agenda item, recap of annual town meeting. Um, let's see, there were two articles I had to speak to. Someone, first of all, did everyone make it to town meeting? That was part of it. I only made the uh, the first night. I had to be at home for the second night, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. It was nice. I was the first one up on the uh, second night. Um, was able to, so someone held the Burnett House funding uh, and they didn't raise their hand the second night to say why they held it. Someone asked why, uh, you know, how many more years we had to pay on it. And I had asked Brian Valentine beforehand uh, the night before, you know, just so I had all the information in my back pocket for, for that one. And it was 18 years. Um, so that was the only question that got asked on that. And the other one was the tennis courts and pickleball courts, um, which got passed with no questions. So I think the write up um, and whatever marketing, um, advertising, recreation did uh, worked very well. Uh, so there went through lickety split um so they could get to the big items which were right after that anyway uh, so any questions on uh annual town meeting all right so then the next was the uh, first draft of the mou for the tennis courts freddie i know i think you're gonna start working on that i don't know if you have anything to share yet freddie you're on mute Freddie, you're still on mute. Freddie? I just sent that. It's a draft. Oh, you sent it Sorry. out to everyone? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a rough draft. Did anyone get it? Let me uh, check. Yeah, I see it right now. I got I can it. Pull it up. Give me one second. So I'll just explain what I did. Um, 
we have a, I believe the format we agreed to, it's a, a template for last year and I plugged in. So. Sorry, I just gotta hide some stuff. All right, here it is. I highlighted, I wasn't sure, was that the second night of town meeting? It was, yep. So that would be the fifth. I don't have a project name, so I think that's something we want to add to our application next year, that the proponent should give it a project name that the CPC agrees to. Do we just want to call this one the Mooney Complex Tennis Courts? OK. Uh, well, is that what the application, what did, what did you put on the app, application? So See. The application was Southboro Recreation Fin Tennis Courts. So why don't we? So I guess the only thing is like I'm just sensitive to the fact that like Fin actually has nothing to do with it because Fin is the school district and that it's actually the comp the complex is under control like control of the town, which gets sometimes dicey between does the school own it or does the town like govern it? So I mean I'd rather we not call it Fin. I but, think we, we took that out of the Warren article as well, based yeah, on your we input. Did. And that's pasted below. I've, I've pasted the Warren article in here. And I don't think that's a bad idea to include in this MOU in okay. some way. Okay, so well, let's something. call it the Mooney Tennis Courts. Okay. Restoration is what it's called. Okay. Yeah, Mooney Tennis Court Restoration. Okay. And the date would be May 5th. Okay. I also added in, and that language doesn't sound quite right, but the intent was, I'm going down to the next area where it's yellow. Okay. This came up before because we have the application that was filled out. You have the review during the presentation and you know the, the community preservation committee's review of the application, but then all of that also gets in the Warren article, which gets approved, which also can't have every detail maybe that was in the Warren article. I mean, that was in the application and the presentations, but I think it's worthwhile to say, you know, that they're bound by the the content of the Warren article. And Mark, you might have a better way of saying that, but I, I think it's worthwhile to put it in there. Committee may disagree, but. Uh, why does it say Calander Field? Oh yeah, that one's wrong. Oh. I cut and pasted, sorry, where does- You gotta go? take out article 18, that's all Calander Field. Oh, just sorry. I just I thought I had cut that out. Right there. Yep. I was like, I, I didn't think this was two hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. No. Sorry. Uh, what does it say? Just keep right. going. Nope. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we want you want to paste in the article the article right there well right where sorry we it looks like before you had pasted calander up top but we could leave it at the bottom um, calander was i'm sorry calander was there and i'm sorry this whole part was supposed to be cut out okay so all of this should be cut out um <laughs> Yeah, because it still says Calander Field. Yeah. Um, um okay. Just that paragraph, yeah. Gotcha. Sorry, right. I thought I, nope. I thought I cut that paragraph out, but it must not have been cut. Yep.
And is Tim Davis the actual proponent? He's managing the project, but I had a question about that. Uh, yeah, he put it forward. Okay. Yep. So brief descriptions below, but I don't know if we want to put the whole Warren article in as well as the summary. Yeah, I think you put both. Okay. So we can just take out brief description and leave the Warren article below if we want. All right. Just doesn't need to be there. And do you have a start date? Mm, uh, like, yeah, July 1, as fast as they can. <laughs> um, I believe, yeah, they've, he's got a live quote for this. So as soon as funds are released, um, they could potentially start. So do we put July 1 in here? Is that okay? Yeah. I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we need to double check and I can do that tomorrow because there's something about which it, it had been described differently to me in the past that Warren articles have to be approved by the, is that the AG's office before they're considered final? When's that happen? Wait a minute. So even post town meeting? It was just a, a comment that was made in passing to me from town accountant and I will check on it tomorrow. Okay, I mean, this if, is it, a, if it impacts this, I mean, I know that happens with like other like warrant articles that weren't already gone through, but ours is pretty boilerplate. Agreed. And this I, is like, and this doesn't actually change like any of our um, like town bylaws. So I don't know that it actually does go to the AG's office. I just want to not have anyone be surprised. Okay. And I just realized if you go down to what funds we used, the fiscal year 2022 fund balance. So that is last, the current year fund balance, right? Right. On yeah. July 1st, we're in fiscal 23. So that's right. probably. Um, means that we don't have to wait for them to approve our budget to get that money's already sitting oh, in the account. Okay. Something to be aware of. I know everyone's eyes roll when I talk about <laughs> budgeting, but it's one of the types of things I consider when we're spending funding. I mean, not spending funding, when we're allocating which account the money comes, the, the, the funding comes from. Yep. When money is available makes a difference, especially if you're trying to start something on July 1st. Yep, I think we just assumed it wasn't available, but that's okay. Um, so yeah. I will just double check to make sure there's no surprises because it should be. Hey, after you review, after you remove the Calandra Field stuff, it, it looks fine. Are there any project specific requirements that have to be inserted down at the bottom? Well, hold on. Let's look. I just want to see what it says in the. So, in the Warren article, it says of the unexpected costs. Projects resurface two tennis courts located at Mooney Field Complex at Richard Road. In addition to resurfacing both courts, the project will include installation of new lines for both tennis and pickleball. Yep. So both courts will have tennis and pickleball. Sorry, both meaning one side will be tennis and one side will be pickleball. Because there's like two court. Well, there's there's two courts side by side, right? But it says the article says with new lines for both tennis and pickleball, meaning like yes, there will be tennis and pickleball on that site, right? Well, and even in the so. Funds will be used to rehab and restore two tennis court surfaces. In addition to the resurfacing, the courts will be painted to allow pickleball to be played as well as tennis okay. in, the, in the project summary at the bottom. 
I read that as both courts are going to have tennis and pickleball. That's that's and one that's, way what was, that's what was quoted to us in the quote too. The quote was both were going to be tennis courts. So, so the big difference is is like the nets, right? I mean, in theory, we could paint it and have, um, and it's all temporary nets, but it's not nearly as like good as. I mean, like we could, we could, we could have that conversation. Um, yeah, maybe we could have that conversation to get the details of what it, the semantics of that and what it means. Well, what was in the quote? Wasn't the quote there was going to be two tennis courts and, and pickleball lines painted? I'm pretty sure. Let me find this quote. Oh. Even uh, so, I'm looking at the the application itself. The second yeah, line, both. it says, in addition to repair, the installation of new lines for both tennis and pickleball will be laid. So, I mean, I can I can follow up with Tim and get clarity on this, but like, I mean, it's true there will be tennis and pickleball. I don't know if they're meant to both be on the, all the courts, right? But I can look, I mean, I know we have both lines painted on some of the courts on Richardson. So, I mean, this is like just a matter of painting, right? And then figuring out what to do for the nets for them. But I can, uh, yeah, I can follow up on that one. Okay. Um, Because I believe the, I mean, from what I remember from the quote too, was that the permanent posts were going to be for tennis, on both, and that's what the new cost, what, why the second court was going to be so expensive, more expensive than the first court. Yeah. We do the posts. I guess I was. I think for me, for in my mind, I don't know if the pickleball was on both, but I could be. I could be just misunderstanding it. So I can follow up on that. Well, I. Does anyone else recall that about the why the second court was more expensive because the posts had to be put in because they were taken out before? But also the other, this second court also is in significantly more disrepair because of all the bolts and the fittings from the skate park and the wear and tear there. So that's the other reason why the other court's more expensive. I am texting Tim right now to see if I can get an answer. I don't have a copy right now, but having the quote on hand would be helpful, right? Yeah, we have the quote, right? Yes, I've got the, I do have the quote right here. Can you guys see this? I mean, like it's gonna be hard to actually read. Okay, sorry, I'm wrong. He's saying that is the plan to have pickleball and tennis on both courts. Okay. So we want that in the MOU. Is that what you're saying, Andrew? No, he's he's saying that's how he reads it. So no, I'm asking Andrew if he wants that on the MOU under the under below. So there's no question in six months. Yeah, I just don't want to have, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Because so we are. It was just me confused. I apologize. Okay. 
Andrew, do you want that on the MOU is my question. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't hurt because obviously if we spent 15 <laughs> minutes going through it with all of us, we might as well put it on. So it's very clear. All right. So that would be maybe E and put E below. Do you want me to add it in there here? No, no, sorry, you're right. Okay. Yeah. For me. Um, is it the is it the post for the tennis nets the issue in addition to the lines? Yeah, I think that was in the quote. So yeah, the posts are going to be put in for the tennis court on the second court. Um. Sorry, was there more you wanted written here? Oh, the, the, the posts were gonna be put in on the second court too for the tennis. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Tennis, all right. Tennis net post. I don't know what you say. Right. So it's for the net, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and other than that, the cracks are going to be, I mean, the other specific was all the cracks are going to be filled. Right. Yep. Yep. Maybe that's for the, yeah, the four. Okay. And the entire surface is going to be, I don't know if it's painted or. So, and then the courts resurfaced, just yeah, resurfaced. Surface, yeah. Um, was there anything for the fence? There's nothing, uh, there's nothing wrong with the fence. Okay. It's All in right. good shape. Yep. Does anyone else have anything else for that one? I, can you go back up to the area where it says the Warren article? Yes. Up above that. As well as bound by content of the town meeting approved Warren article. Mark, particularly you always weigh in on statements like this. You know my intent in adding it, but is there a better way of saying it? And do you agree to including it in there? What what in particular, Freddie? I mean, the, 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 the I think the Warren article is fine. I, I think the project summary is fine. I think so here, fine. the project applicant, I mean, this, this paragraph that starts, the proponent acknowledges that funds available and improved, right? Then it goes on, this next sentence, the project applicant shall use such funds in a manner consistent with representation made to the Community Preservation Committee and in the corresponding application for community preservation funding presented to the Community Preservation Committee. I added in as well as bound by the content of the town meeting approved Warren article. That was, that came up in a, in a discussion on another project once because you have all three flow together but they're not always the exact same. I just thought it was valid to mention that the, 
the Warren article is really the trump card here. Yeah. But the the other the other the reason we mentioned the other the presentation and the um the application is because that has those have more details than you can fit into the small little Warren article. And we wanted to be sure those were adhered to as well, right? So I'm just I added this language tonight, and I just want to be sure the committee is okay with it. Or I'm good with it. I, I, I'm good with it. I think it's a good, a good suggestion. Okay. So what I'm going to recommend for this is that Jen, thank yep. you for updating it. We'll clean it up with a, get rid of all the yellow and send it out to all the committee members to and to. Um, recreation to look at and see if there's any comments before we finalize it because you don't want to approve anything that's hastily done right yep and then at the next meeting we can try to get it signed off well before the july 1st date okay does that sound good to everyone and yeah that sounds good sounds good all right nicely done are we ready to move on to the next item Recreation closed projects. So Freddie, I think you had an update on, uh, were you still working with the town on how we could do like one fell swoop on closing out all the projects? Yeah, I, I have to follow up on this. I'm sorry, it's on the agenda. It's just, I wanna be sure we do the right process and the, you know, the right, I think we need a different vote than last week, last meeting you approved closing them out, but I think we need to have specific language and I just have to get that, okay? I'm gonna right. check with Stuart and I'm gonna check with accounting. I just wanna do it right. And that, and then, that covers the like two items down too, right? The discussion of closing out projects process. Yeah, because we're gonna start looking okay. at other articles as well. All right. Finishing up and finishing, closing them down. So that kind of goes into the next one, the, the uh, planning of the annual uh, CPA public forum. So there's, uh, in the past, we've done a regular meeting after the forum. Um, I think this time though, th there's a bunch of items like closing out projects that we'll probably get into that um, we're gonna want some applicants around that, um, you know, I think it might be better that we do one meeting just for hey, this is CPA, we'd like to get applications. And then a separate night, we have people come in for closing out projects and um, discussing updates and things like that. Um, so it's- um, Can I suggest something, Andrew? The church and state. <laughs> Andrew? Yes. May I suggest something? Yes. It, it would be a good idea to update the application as well. So that could happen before before the presentation. So at the presentation, you can announce it and hand it out to people. Um, with COVID, we got a little behind on doing this outreach to people to apply and here's the application and you know, just really having all the ducks in the row when you do that. And then also planning when you want the application in by and you know, when you start reviewing it. Like, what's the deadline and getting the application out in June. Normally you have a deadline in September or August. Uh, that's uh, August, I think. Or it's usually August. End of August, yeah. Okay. So going through the application and finalizing those dates before the presentation where you're telling everyone what you wanna do as well as doing the closeouts. As well, Andrew. So that would come okay. first and then the presentation, which means two meetings oh. in June. Okay. But still, I'm talking about having like a regular meeting in June that's talking about closing out projects, kind of like what we're doing today, maybe. Um, and also touching base again with the um, St. Mark's Church, but a separate meeting that would have to do with application process and public forum. Is everyone good with that? Okay. Now, up, updating the application, I think, it, I mean, 
Friday. The only thing we really have to do is change dates on it and, um, you know, make it the 2022 application um, and whatever dates we want to make the uh, completed by. Is there, were a couple of, there were a couple of minor points we were going to do a few years ago that never got implemented when the COVID hit. So. Okay. Not, not, a, not a rehaul, but just some formatting stuff. Is everyone comfortable if Freddie and I just make the tweaks to the application and we can send it out and say, everyone good with it? Okay. Yes, I would add. Thank you. So then do we have a, a date for our next meeting, Freddie, already? Do you know? We, we did. It was in, I don't know why. I have June 9th on my calendar. June 9th. I do as well. I have, I have. Okay. Uh, happy to have that, but I am going to be out of pocket on the 9th. Um, if you guys want to run it without me. I think you need to be at that meeting, Andrew. Okay. So okay, let's see, can we bump that to Ben, what do you have? The, six, the 16th works for me. Uh, the, the following week is conservation, unless we move to a different day of the week. I have a um, historical commission meeting on the 16th. So that does not work for me. Okay. And I'm out of town the 14th or the 18th. What if we did the eighth? Would that would people be able to make a Wednesday? Uh, Wednesdays are hard for me. Um, if there's an advisory meeting that night, but I I can try to make that work. Works for me. I'm fine with Wednesday. That's well, Wednesday the eighth. Was there any way we could start at seven thirty? Um, that works fine. better for me actually okay i i'm gonna be on a plane on the eighth okay how about this seventh seventh the tuesday i can do that that works i can do that do you need 7 30 annie um, works Jen? for me i so I might not be able to do that because we're trying to get our um, recreations, uh, con our consultants in that night, but but mine's up in the air, so go ahead and schedule it. So you just might not have me. Well, well hold on. Uh, let's do the eighth. I can do the eighth. <laughs> Actually, now I'm looking at my calendar. It's the seventh. I'm on the plane. <laughs> I'll be in San Francisco on the 8th, but I, I can do it remotely. Nice. 7.30 on the 8th? 7.30 on the 8th. Cross off the 7th. What time is that out there? 4.30. 4.30. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then that gives us the whole rest of the month to figure out a date for the presentation, which is good because we have to put the it has to be advertised for two weeks and we have to get that advertisement in like a week before the two weeks start. Mm -hmm. So do you think it, do you think it makes sense to allow for more than two weeks to have it advertised? You know, just thinking, you know, committees, some just meet once a month. Um, two weeks just seems really, really tight turnaround um, for something, you know, this, this big. No, I'm, I'm talking about in the newspaper. It's a re it's a legal notice or something that we have to do. We can start doing the publication that we're having the event sooner. Okay. You, I mean, do people want well, to go out into July? Well, like when are we when are we making applications available? At that presentation. Okay, so that's like what six weeks? Until they're due. 
is it due end of August? Uh, I mean, or? usually, usually though, they come trickling in in the middle of September, October. Okay, so, so it's not it's not a hard deadline. No, we always partner with the applicants. Okay. Uh, the 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 uh, the meeting kind of gets the juices flowing, people thinking about it, um, mm -hmm. and usually, even if you know, look, the recreation got the one in for the tennis courts, look at the split. <laughs> Really so, it's, um, and granted, they've done a lot of them, but it we usually have like a couple of drafts we go through. It's like get it on paper, let us know what we're looking at, so we get an idea of what we have for funds and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And if we, you know, we can kind of tee it up with them uh, so that we can um, narrow down on the specifics of the application later. Okay, that so, makes sense. Yeah, so it, it's not like it has to be perfect come the end of August. So. Okay. You know, the reason for a deadline, right? And many They're years ago, oh. <laughs> many years ago, this, when I was chair, the CPC members told me, Freddie, send us the, say the, say the application deadline was August 21st. And they said, send me, send us the applications as they come in. And I said, yeah, I'll be sending them to you on August 21st. And they said, no, as soon as they come in, send us the applications. And I said, yes, I'll be sending you them on August 21st. <laughs> That's why you have a deadline. Yep. So. so don't tell everyone we'll take them afterwards, but we usually do. Um, all right. So we meet. On you, need a, you need a date for the presentation. Um, how about the 23rd? Oh, wait. Didn't yeah. Ben say yes, conservation? Oh. Yeah, I've got conservation on the 20th. 22nd? Can do that. Can everyone else do the 22nd? Yeah. For um, those of you yes. that are new, in the past, yes. I always had bell choir on the Wednesday, and there was never a meeting on Wednesdays. Dick up John, too, but those days are gone. <laughs> okay, so let's do the 22nd. I'm assuming we don't need, you don't need quorum or anything like that for it. those presentations i i can't be there but i think that's fine right who's going to run the meeting <laughs> oh that's right we're still you heard that come july we have to go back in person right <coughs> i know <laughs> we were just told well we were just told that the other night at rec that well we were told not to keep scheduling meetings because we're not sure we're most likely going to have to go back in person that's the with COVID numbers the way they are, yeah, I believe that. Come July, we were told we probably would be back in person, but who knows? It's all rumors. Nothing's official. <laughs> Cheer up, another variant will probably emerge when we're back here. <laughs> so the twenty second is in June. Yes, it is. Yep. You can't be there. I won't be. I'll be on an airplane, but that's. I'm assuming you don't need. If you've got quorum, then you're fine, right? Yeah, we just got to figure out how to run the meeting. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you're a central person. <laughs> I mean, I could do the day before. Um, I mean, school's out. We're taking off for a week and a half. So that's 21st? I can do the 21st. Works for me. I can, I can do the 21st. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. So the 21st will be the presentation presentation awesome and we should start sending out information about that yep blast it out to all the committees boards um, oh, we have standard language for that yeah all right so we talked about the cpa a application process we talked about the other one closing out projects. So that's done. Chairman's report. Um, let's see. Uh, the only new thing I had was um, I forgot where I heard this, uh, but I got a video clip of an EDC meeting where. <laughs> so I do. Oh, Ben's laughing. Yeah. Um, where the EDC was looking uh, at ways to fund their admin to write grants and thought that they 
uh, or suggested to have their admin look into using CPC um, admin funds to help pay for their admin to write grants because they thought it would fall under uh, community housing. Um, so Freddie, I think if you could ask uh, when you talk to Stuart, um, if they've ever seen anything like that, uh, they're talking about that'd be a full-time position. I know you're a consultant. Um, they're looking you know, for a full-time role ongoing. I assume that would mean benefits and everything that uh, they'd want to use part of our um, CPA funds to fund, which just doesn't ring right to me, but uh, it'd be great to have Stuart's uh, insight on that. Um, you can hire a staff person with for the CPA. Doesn't have to be a consultant, but I I will ask Stuart because that yeah. would see, for, to administer the Community Preservation Act, it's very specific. But I will ask Stuart. Do you just yeah. I looked into it a little bit too, and that, that's what I found. It's for, it is for administration, but it's for the administration of the act. However, they can come in under community housing uh, with a CPA application, um, but the admin funds are for administrating the Community Preservation Act in Southboro. Yeah, yeah we, so, we, we've asked before, but I will ask again. It's very stringent on what you can spend those monies on. Yeah. So. All righty. Um, and the only other thing, so, uh, Sam, Sam's still there. Uh, Sam was asking me, or we were talking at the last planning board meeting, um, about the affordable housing trust funds. Um, Freddie, I suggested that maybe he, you and I just meet and go over what the, how the, the uh, rules changed back in 2018, I think. They got more specific um, so that we could, uh, you know, work out something with the um, Affordable Housing Trust Committee um, so that those funds could just move over um, and what, what would be needed for that. So if everyone's comfortable with that, um, it would just be, I think we, because we discussed this in the past, there there's some new, more strict or more more stringent requirements around the funding and some uh, similar to like an MOU that we'd want with the Affordable Housing Trust um, to say, hey, how are you going to use these funds? In some cases, you you could use the money to pay like someone's rent, um, you know, and that's that's an example of I'd want to know upfront. You know how how is the money going to be used? Is it going to, are we going to be paying rent for people? Are you going to purchase a home and flip it? Are you are we going to purchase a home and keep it and rent it out and use that money? You know, just those types of things. Um, instead of just moving the funds over and saying have at it. Um, I mean, I think the point is that's different here is because you have to look at what was in the application for those funds, and yeah. that's what caused. A little bit more of a concern on how they're going to be used. Okay. So that comes into it too, I think, for the committee. So if everyone's comfortable with that, um, Freddie and I'll work with either Sam or other members of the um, select board or the affordable housing trust committee to uh, come up with the wording for that. So those are the things I had. Um, other uh, minutes from the last meeting, they went out, correct? Yes. Jessie, I believe she sent them to you before she left. She's out of the country and she will be back to take care of the minutes and stuff. But, um, okay, I'm not seeing any meeting minutes, I haven't seen them. I have no. Oh. All right, so we'll have to wait to the June eighth. The June eighth. Yeah. Meeting. Yeah, I, I didn't get them. <clears throat> um, next meeting dates we already got. 
So there's only one thing left. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. 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 All right. All those in favor, going around as I see people. Uh, Jen. Yes. Ben. Yes. Ann. Yes. David. Yes. Mark. Yes. And Andrew is a yes. Thank you, Freddie, for all your prep on this. Lining everyone up. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very Thanks, much. Everyone. Good night. Have a great night, everyone. Have a nice night, guys. Good night. Good night.